This is the Retroid Pocket 5, and I finally got my hands on one, so I'm super excited to set it up with all sorts of games and emulators to make my ultimate handheld. The goal in this video is to set up my top four favorite emulators that I'm gonna use on this handheld. Those being Dolphin, to play Wii and GameCube games, Simu to play Wii U games, and Azahar to play 3DS games. And the main entree, Eden emulator that will let me play my Switch games all on my Pocket 5. Lucky for me, I was sent this for free from AliExpress who decided to sponsor today's video. Big shout out to them because I would still be wishing I had the Pocket 5 instead of actually holding it here ready to game. More details about their Black Friday deals, their Double Eleven Festival, later in the video. And I even have some exclusive discount codes you can use to get a better deal. And yes, I know the Pocket 6 was announced recently, but I'm just happy to have this one. So let's get into it. So here we go, step one. First things first, we need to get this baby set up. You know, all the fun things you get to do with a brand new device. Add Wi-Fi, time zone, select the language, all that good stuff. Also, I'm not from Phoenix, it's just my time zone. MDT. I'm from Canada. But then it comes to a page where you can pre-install apps or emulators, which you can see Dolphin here. But this section doesn't have nearly all the ones I want, so I'll skip most of it. And I think most people would do the same. I mean, they have Citra here, but it is not the latest 3DS emulator. You'll see what that is later in the video. But the part that matters for me is to opt out of the Retroid system launcher and choose the AOS launcher, giving it more of a phone experience. Also, I must say that this thing can run games way better than my current phone, which is the Google Pixel 6a. Maybe I need to upgrade that too. But anyways, once we're all done there, I'm in. And at this point, I'm gonna go into the settings and change a couple things like screen timeout, turning notifications off. I tried the dark theme, but honestly, I wasn't feeling it, so I'm sticking to the light theme. Changing the screen lock is a nice touch of taking away an extra step to get back on after a break. And now it's time to log into the Google Play Store and get the most important app available. Do you know what it is? It's YouTube. Do you know why? Well, because you can subscribe to Funky Scott and watch my videos here. But with all that, all of our setup is done. Time to move on to step two. It's time to set up my emulators. The easiest way to do this is through an app called Obtainium. It will allow you to obtain each emulator all from one spot, so you don't have to click links on each emulator and separate download links. It's just all in one, it's very useful. But it'll let you get the latest version of almost any emulator out there, including our beloved Switch emulators. So to get Obtainium, I'll go into Google Chrome, type in the name, and then the Obtainium GitHub should be the first link where you can get the latest release. The file we want is the arm64 release.apk. And it does say it might be harmful, but don't worry, it is safe. There's one more thing to get. We need to get an actual script that will let us get the emulators from Obtainium. So back to Google search, we'll look up Obtainium emulation pack, and here we can go and download the JSON file. But now that we have both of those, we can go back into our files and actually install it. So we'll install the Obtainium APK first, and then we'll just have to go through a few prompts to let our device install files from Google Chrome, since these aren't official. And once we're in, go to the import export section and select Obtainium import. This is where we're gonna select the JSON file. And now, if I did it right, in the app section, now all the emulators are super easily installable. So let's get the best ones. And I did install Dolphin in the initial setup, but here you can update the emulator. Azahar is the latest and recommended 3DS emulator at this point in time. Just gotta change the settings to allow these to install. Next up, there's Simu. This one's for Wii U. I honestly don't use this emulator much at all because I love using my actual Wii U console, but let's get it because this is going on a handheld I can take anywhere. You can see Citron there, which is a Switch emulator, but we're going for the Eden Switch emulator and we'll just get the standard version. I've honestly never emulated on an Android device before, so I'm pretty excited for this. If you guys are interested in me making some more guides on Android emulation, let me know in the comments. But now that we have all of our emulators, they are useless without games. So next step, game setup. There are two options when it comes to setting up your games on your Retroid Pocket 5, or any Android device for that matter. There's internal storage, which in my case is 128 gigabytes, or you can get a micro SD card to expand it massively. And speaking of that, AliExpress would be a great place to look for micro SDs, and yes, they do have name brands like SanDisk too. I'd like to think that was a pretty good segue, not as good as Linus Tech Tips, but here we go. Because I'm working with AliExpress on this video, I now have a team you can join to get 10% cash back on everything you purchase. With certain exclusions, of course, but there are daily tasks to get extra cash back too, and the higher points our team gets, the more benefits. Many popular gaming and modding accessories that are on Amazon are the same or just as good as the ones you can get on 
AliExpress, and sometimes they're cheaper over here. Now, this doesn't apply to everything. Amazon has its pros, its cons, and so does AliExpress. But you can find some really good deals that can save you money. Especially now when the Black Friday sales are live. For example, recently I bought string lights off of AliExpress to add to my setup, and they were cheaper than Amazon, but they do the same thing. And because I make a lot of videos about modding your consoles, you can find supplies like switch jigs, SD cards, screen covers, or this Wii shell for a really good price. Not to mention the plethora of third-party console accessories you can get, like this Pocket 5 case they sent me. Just make sure to check the shipping costs, as it might depend where you live. You can get legit products like the Retroid Pocket 5 here in the video, or my favorite Nixie controller for the Switch or Switch 2, and you can even get these cheaper sometimes with the deals that AliExpress runs. If you want to join my Ali team, click the link in the description or scan the QR code that's on the screen right now or you can use these discount codes on the screen to get up to 20% off. And I will say a nice thing about AliExpress is you can actually use PayPal unlike Amazon so it gives you another option on paying. This might sound a little random but I have a Garmin Instinct watch and I get my replacement bands on AliExpress and here's why. On the official Garmin website this costs $50 to replace your rubber band. On Amazon, it's a lot better. You can find them for $13, $12, but AliExpress, you can find the same one for five or six bucks. This one you do need over $10 to get free shipping, but that's two for the price of one of the cheap ones on Amazon, and these I've had no issues with whatsoever. They wear out over time, just like the official one that came with my watch. So this is one of those things that has actually saved me money, which is pretty cool. But anyways, back to game setup. I'll be just using the internal storage on my Pocket 5, so to transfer my game files over, I need to plug it into my PC first off, and when you plug it in, this prompt should come up and you can change it to file transfer giving your computer access to the storage, but if not, you can just go into your settings, devices, and change it manually there. So each emulator requires a specific game file type to work properly, but I've basically set up all these emulators apart from Azahar on my PC, I still use Citra, so I have the files that are good to go. I'll put a picture on the screen showing the file types for each emulator I'm setting up today. And a side note for Switch emulation, you do need prod key and firmware files in order for games to work. These can be acquired using the lockpick app on a modded Switch, or, well, yeah, never mind. Let's continue. The only games that I'll need to source are Wii U games, so I'll need to find some WUA files real quick. I can't help you more than this if that's what you were hoping for, but you can check the pinned comment for more info. So I have everything transferred over now. This is what it looks like. I have my games folder with a bunch of different folders for each console. So that's where I have all my games and I do have updates and DLC for my Switch games in the same folder as well. You can make them separate if you want, that's up to you. And then for Eden emulator, I have my Switch keys and firmware in this folder right here ready to install. But now that I have those set up, we can get setting up the emulators, which brings us to step four. Each emulator has to be individually set up, so let's start with Dolphin. First thing to do when we load it up is to tell Dolphin where our games are. So we'll add our Wii games first, so just navigate to where you have those games, click use this folder, and we're good. And let's do the same with our GameCube games. And there we go, they're all showing up nicely. With those set up, now we can add our controllers. So we'll go into the settings, and there is some settings you can change for this, but it, this isn't going to be like a super in-depth guide. If you want one of those for Android emulation, let me know in the comments. But basically, we'll go change our input and add a controller, and we just got to go through and map all of our buttons on our Retroid. And then once that's done, we're going to do the same for our Wii controllers as well. And then on the Wii, there's attachments that you can map the buttons to as well. So for Super Mario Galaxy, you can map a nunchuck or the classic controller. You can choose which extension you want. And you can even use motion settings. Like New Super Mario Bros. Wii, you can shake it to get that same effect of using an actual Wiimote. But now that I have the controllers mapped, we can hop into a game and test it out. And don't worry, we can take away the controller overlay because that would be way too distracting. Fun fact, New Super Mario Bros. Wii is the reason I got into Wii modding was because I wanted to play it, but my little brother scratched the disc so bad that I couldn't, and I was introduced to Homebrew. The rest is history. But now that we're done with the Dolphin emulator, we are ready to go on to Simu, so let's get that one set up. So in Simu, we have to do the same thing. We have to tell it where to find the game. So we can go into the settings option here, go into general settings, and then we'll add a game path, and same thing as before, 
we're going to navigate to where we have our Wii U games. Once we have those added, we can go into our input settings and add a controller. You can choose Gamepad Pro Controller or whatever you want, but I'll just map my controller. And now Simu is basically ready to go. You can download some graphic packs if you want, but I'm going to make sure a game works and we can move on to Azahar for 3DS games. So load in, click get started, and you can choose to allow notifications and microphone, or you can skip it for now. You can always change it later. We can select the folders we want, just show it where your 3DS games are, or you can do this inside of the app as well. Hit the three dots in the top left. If your game files are also CIA, let's install those now. So just go select the game and it should install to your emulator. Give your page a refresh and it should pop up. There's Mario Kart 7. So I'll install my other one. If you have .cci files and didn't select the folder in the initial setup, you can go into the settings and pick select user folder and just tell Azahar where they are. And if some of your games don't show up, they might not be decrypted, which I had a couple in this case, so I have to go find a decrypted version of that game or an installable CIA. And just like the other emulators, we gotta map our controller. This one's pretty easy because it basically matches the Retroid Pocket buttons perfectly. But games are in, controllers mapped, now we're ready to start up our game. And yes, you can also turn off the controller overlay as well. Have any of you heard about the mod CTGP7? That's one of the best Mario Kart 7 mods and you can play it on this emulator. But now let's move on to the next one. So now it's time for our main entree, Eden Emulator. So let's load in and we're gonna do the setup, but this one's a little bit different. We can grant permissions if you want notifications, but then we need to install our prod keys. So I'm just gonna navigate to where I have my prod.keys file and it'll install instantly. And we'll do the same thing for our firmware. This one will take a little bit longer, but still really quick. Those are good. Now we're gonna do the important part is tell Eden where our games are. I'll show Eden that it's in my Switch game folder. And there we go, games load up. There's some settings you can change. If you have updates or DLC for a specific game, just long press on that game, click add-ons, then install and install the file. And it'll install and automatically apply to that game. All right, let's open up a game. And this is a Switch game. If you guys watch my videos, you know the drill. I'm gonna have to blur it, I'm sorry. Eden also has a controller overlay, but you can just hit the back button and toggle that in the settings on the left. And just like that, we have our Switch games ready to play. This is honestly the one that I'll probably use the most, next to Dolphin. But now I have most of the games I want on my Retroid Pocket 5. I might add some other emulators for NES games or Game Boy games but this is enough for me to get started. But big shout out to AliExpress again for sending me this for free. That's really cool to be in a situation where I have these opportunities. But I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one. Stay funky and happy modding. <laughs>